Larry Winter is with us this morning. Winter and Scoggin CPAs, our expert on small business matters. Larry, it's always great talking with you. It's a delight to be here, and but I'm always afraid when you refer to me as an expert. Okay, well, <laughs> I've done that up to this point. I'm probably going to continue to. So, sorry about that. Uh, the retailers that are around today are ones that have done exceptionally well. They have made their way through the recession and this long recovery. A lot of their brethren has fallen by the wayside. Many of them are thinking now, what's the next step? They've got competition from the big box players that are taking share away. They've got competition from the major online players that are taking share. And many of them are considering opening a second location as a way to increase their sales, their, 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 their bottom line, to be more important to, to suppliers, to better leverage their ad dollars and so on. What are some of the things that a retailer should have together before they even think about opening a second location or taking the, the, the first step? I guess they have to get their act together in the prime business first. Well, I'm glad you're referring to the words, the prime business, because far too often in business, we forget, uh, especially to small and medium sized companies, that our prime business is customer satisfaction. I think I've shared on this program once before. Uh, when I was attending the Wharton School of Business, I had a marketing professor who said the most dangerous sentence in all of education. He said, if you don't remember anything else about this course, remember this. And of course, this is all that I remember from that course. <laughs> and that is people only buy two things, solutions to problems and good feelings. And P.S., good feelings pay better. And we need to remember that as small businessmen. Okay, our customers come to us because they have a perceived want or need. And our job is to meet their need. And so instead of trying to sell them something, we need to be about the business of, first of all, understanding what their need is and then marrying what we've got with their need or being honest enough that, you know, I don't have a product that'll meet that need, but try so-and-so. That'll always come back to you. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, then the second step, when we've, when we've got our, our focus right, is who is the best person we've got to give us advice about our business? Our best customers. What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? Have you ever bought them lunch? Have you ever taken some biscuits to the job site? Okay, to, to spend a few minutes and see what they're doing and to ask them, how can I help you more? And especially if we're getting ready to open a new site, we're gonna to want to be asking them, you know, we're getting ready and, and considering open a second store where should it be? Far too often you and I see retail locations placed in the wrong place. Okay, and uh, you know, often we're brought in after everything's already done. The lease is signed, 10 years, thank you very much. Uh, and, and it's not working. Well, it's not working because it's in the wrong place. You didn't listen to your customers, you never talked to them, or you never went out to develop new customers. You know, if you're going from a new city, say you're going from Johns Creek to Cumming, uh, you, you need to be looking, okay, who is my potential customer base here? Uh, who are the decorators? Invite them in for a coffee clatch, and decorators love to talk. And I mean that in a positive way. You know, what are your needs? What can I do to be more customer friendly to you? Same thing with uh, contractors, especially the residential guys. What can I do to be helping you? 
And uh, they're going to tell you where your store needs to be, probably. They're going to tell you a lot about what you need to be stocking. And then, after you've done that, those two things, the next things to do is uh, to go look at your own accounting software. Are you providing yourself and your business the information that you need? And have you made yourself easy to deal with with your vendors? Uh, Industry-specific software in, in the flooring industry is so available, it's so reasonable, it's tried and true. Your vendors can deal with you. They love it when you use it. Uh, it provides you the statistics and the information that you need if you'll just use it. Uh, and so if you're getting ready to open your first store or your seventh store, if you're not on industry-specific software, I think you need to take a time out and get it, look at it, and understand it. Uh, uh, because I find it doubtful uh, that what you're using is going to be equal to uh, what's available and what's supported by the industry. Well, nowadays, where you can find anything you need on a handheld device, and I suspect if there's one, two, three or more stores, you're going to be spending more time out of the stores, it's really important that you can see what's going on. In your store. And, That's yeah. right. Absolutely. The store. Then the fourth problem, okay, not so much with your first store, but with your second or seventh. How do I, how do I manage this thing? Okay. Uh, there are three ways to do, lose a great deal of money in a hurry. Okay, it's sort of like, a, how do you have a fire? You've got to have fuel, you've got to have heat, and you've got to have uh, energy, okay? Uh, oxygen, pardon me. Same thing with losing money. You've got to have three things. You've got to do it with borrowed money, you've got to do it in a hurry, and you've got to do it with something you know nothing about or for which you have absentee ownership. Okay, so the key is going to be who do I have managed this? Now, you're not the first person to deal with this problem. McDonald's and all the other franchises deal with this problem every day. And the answer is the manager has to have skin in the game. And if you're not willing to give the manager skin in the game to where he really wants to look at it as if it were his own, then his heart's not going to be in it. Now, it would be great if you've got somebody in store number one who has proven themselves, and now you can give them a promotion that gives everybody heart. Wow, look, look what's happening here. Uh, and, and then in, in working with your accountant and with others within the industry, you need to be putting in uh, really good uh, internal controls. Again, the industry software helps. Mm -hmm. Uh, to make sure that all of the receipts go in the till <laughs> and none of the product goes out the door that didn't uh, go through the computer system. Uh, but uh, th those are simple things to get your business off to a great start. Uh, just deciding to open a new one and driving around in your car and you coming up with where you want to do it and then you trying to bounce back and forth between two stores or three stores with nobody in charge but you, that's going to be a disaster. Gonna it's going to be a disaster. Assume that there's somebody, a managerial potential in your store that you would consider making a manager. Do you offer him X percentage of the business? And if so, how much? Well, uh, personally, I'm, I'm not in favor of offering people percentages of the business. Instead, I'm in favor of offering them a percentage of the profits. Okay. Okay. But you need to have the same calculation every time. And, and you need to sit down with your accountant and, and other advisors and go through that. But it needs to be meaningful. Okay. Uh, it doesn't need to be outrageous, but it doesn't need to be uh, miserly either. In other words, they have to have a vested interest uh, in doing a real good job. Uh, my favorite, and because it seems to be fairly widely, widely known, is Chick-fil-A. Uh, Chick-fil-A uh, owner-operators, after certain basic costs have been covered, they get a significant percentage of the profits after the base costs 
have been provided for. And, um, and they are wise enough then to share it with their team managers and others so that everybody wants to do a great job. Okay, a highly motivated force uh, does a great job, especially if they can uh, literally tell every customer, uh, it's my pleasure because you're trying to meet their needs. And, and again, most retailers forget this concept of meeting the customer's need just way too quickly. The idea that you are in the customer service business, you just happen to be selling floor, floor coverings. That's, That's exactly, exactly what it's about. If all people want is pure price, that they're willing to do all the rest of the work by themselves, they're not gonna be coming into a small and medium sized store. They're going to be going to a big box retailer because all they or are on the internet because all they want is the cheapest price mm -hmm. and not necessarily the best product. Everything is based on price. Mm -hmm.